from Bamako to Buguni, and even Timbuktu. A show of support for the country's military-backed government of transition, which is facing international sanctions and increasingly isolated. The West African body ECOWAS imposed sanctions on Mali last Sunday after coup leader and head of Mali's transition, Asimi Goita, announced a delay in February's scheduled elections. In response, ECOWAS shut land and air borders to the landlocked country, halted financial transactions, froze Mali's government access to the regional central bank. Since, the prices of basic necessities are on the rise and the state is running low in cash. The sanctions are against us Malians. We do not need those international organizations like the West African body ECOWAS to tell us what to do. Why are they interfering in our affairs? The demonstration started with a prayer for peace in a country torn by war. Millions are displaced, thousands have been killed. Despite the presence of EU, UN, French and West African troops, groups linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIL are gaining ground. For Goita, who took power in a coup in 2020, finding peace starts with extending his time in power and hiring Russian fighters to help the Malian army go from defeat to victory. Mercenaries of the Wagner Force are present in a significant way. These mercenaries are former Russian fighters who are transported by Russian planes, who are equipped with Russian weapons, but at this time, the Russians say that they do not exist. Seeing a step back in democracy, the 10 European nations deployed in Mali to combat armed groups may remove their troops. We want to remain engaged in Mali, but it must not be at any cost. Despite the pressure, many Malians see in this crisis a moment of national unity, waving the nations and Russian flags side by side, an act of defiance in the face of uncertainty. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera.